Um, welcome and uh, let's pray and begin. So would someone from the class want to lead in prayer today? The mic is uh, uh, around? Yes, at the back there. Okay. Yeah, any one of you. Just... Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. Lord, from morning till now, you are so gracious to us, Lord, to learn all the classes. Lord, as we come for this class, Lord, let your name alone be glorified. I pray this class should be a blessing for us. Whatever we learn, Lord, let it go in our hearts and let it transform, Lord. I pray that you will guide us and give us the wisdom to understand and know your truth, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you for leading us in prayer. So we will try and recap what we have done in the last class. We were talking about Abraham, who is called as the father of our faith because his life is marked with a relationship uh, that he had with God based on faith. There are many instances in Abraham's life, as we saw in the last class, where he really needed to put his trust in God. He's sort of a pioneer or the first uh, person to step out in various ways, but he did it. And so we call him as the father of our faith. And we learn from his life. You know, when we look at the book of Romans, which is written by Apostle Paul, so in uh, Romans 4 verses 11 and 12, uh, where, you know, he says that Abraham, right, Abraham, that he had the seal of righteousness of faith in and through his life. And then uh, he also walked uh, in the steps of faith. So we then went ahead and we observed the decisions he made, the which he trusted in God so that we can learn from those steps of faith. We then went to Romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 21. There we saw, you know, one by one, the different steps of Abraham's faith. So the first one we said was that Abraham simply believed in God. So whatever God said, he believed in God. What helped him believe in God is his understanding of God. So Whenever we talk about faith, it's about how much we know God. Because when God tells us to do something, uh, it most of the time, most of the times, it is not uh, very logical. Or for the natural mind, it may seem impossible. But when we understand who God is, we realize that God can do the impossible. So we know Him for who He is. He's a mighty God, you know, he's all able, he's El Shaddai. So when I know God personally, it gives me the courage to trust that, yes, this is possible, God can do it. So that is the first example from the life of Abraham because he understood the nature of God, he understood God. See, there are it's two different things. One is to know about God, which many of us can do. We have so much of information. No, God is great, God is good. Uh, God is true. But imagine when God says something and we are not able to believe it. That's because we know about God, but we don't know God. Do you see the difference? So in the case of Abraham, when we say Abraham believed God, he knew God. So that's the point that we are trying to make. So when we know God uh, in our walk with the Lord, we will be able to believe him for many things. Okay, so it all starts with a strong relationship that we have with God. So when God told Abraham that he would bless him, that he would make him the father of many nations. Uh, when we look at the life of Abraham, earlier his name was uh, Abraham. Okay, and God changed it to Abraham. So the name Abraham is, um, I think, father of uh, prince, princes or something like that. Exalted father. It, that's what it means. Abram means exalted father or respected, honored father. But God changed his name to Abraham. Abraham means the father of multitudes. So he believed 
the moment god said yeah you are going to be the father of multitudes he believed but it's going to take a relationship with god in order to know god deeply understand him for who he is and immediately believe god so for us the what is the step that we have to follow when god says something we have to believe him but it is going to depend on how much we know god for who he is now sometimes we depend on other people's relationship with god like we may say oh my mother has a very strong relationship with god my grandmother has a very strong relationship my father has a strong relationship my pastor has a strong relationship right they know god in a close way now just because they know god so closely our faith will not depend on they are knowing god i have to make my own journey so as i'm making my own journey and as i'm understanding god for who he is uh where where can i get that information who is who is god you know how to know him and not just about him we have to believe god that's the first step abraham believed god so we are saying we need to know god how to know god in a deep way in a close way is my question okay reading the word of god fine what else prayer all right so all these things right to develop our relationship with god so when we say reading the scriptures we read it with understanding right when we say prayer we relating with god spending time and many other aspects about prayer the true prayer that we talked about so all of these things in our lives and not just this when we take a step of faith once it becomes easier the next time so each time god is asking us to believe for example you know if we are taking a step of faith to walk in the supernatural like you know release a word of prophecy or pray for someone uh, so that healing may be made manifest things like that uh, what happens is the first time we do it the second time the knowledge of god that we have is deeper so it becomes easier to believe god the second time and similarly third time fourth time it just becomes stronger and stronger so as much as it's important to read the word and pray and have all the spiritual disciplines walking with the lord in obedience every time we take a step the next time it's our knowledge of god and our trust in god is deeper so in all these ways we can develop our faith in god and believe god take him at his word abraham believed god and therefore he became the father of many nations next the step is against all odds or or against hope in hope believing so we said that it may so happen that um in the natural there is no anchor for our faith but how did abraham believe he hoped in god he had hope in god and remember i said the a biblical hope is not uh, it's not like it may happen or it may not happen the biblical hope is certain in the next chapter we will study about biblical hope and when we look at hope and faith in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 they go together so there is always hope first there is hope that god is going to do something and like that abraham kept hope in his heart that surely god will make him the father of um, multitudes and so when we have hope that god is going to do something it kind of inspires our faith faith remains strong when there is hope that god is going to do something so in this way abraham kept his hope alive hope is in the future faith is in the present and so his faith in god kept getting stronger because there was a hope in his life that 
God will do what he has promised. In the same way, coming to us, do we have hope in God? That, you know, God will bless us, God will increase us, God will work through us. So many different things that we can actually hope in God for. So we must have some uh, clear pictures of hope in God. What are we hoping in God for? Right? So there needs to be some hope. If we say, no, I don't have any hope, then where is the faith? There has to be hope and that will be attached to our faith. Okay, so hoping in God. Against all hope, Abraham hoped in God. And the third one that we looked at is that he did not become weak in his faith by looking at circumstances. So this again happens when we look at circumstances. We may get discouraged. So we shouldn't fix our eyes on circumstances. Acknowledge circumstances, but fix our eyes on the word of God, right? So meditate on the word of God. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20, it says, pay attention, pay attention to the word. So how should we focus on the word of God? With everything that we have, we are giving it our highest focus or our full attention. So it's not just surface level, but we pay attention to the word of God while, yeah, circumstances are there. But we don't give our attention to the circumstances. That's what Abraham did. So in his case, we clarified that he was too old. Uh, so was Sarah. Those were the circumstances. But God still worked a miracle through his life because he did not let circumstances weaken his faith. So don't let circumstances weaken your faith. Continue strong in God. So he did not become weak in his faith. And then it says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief, you know, initially we may have hopelessness. We may feel like our faith is weakening. But later on, if we are going to give it our full attention, it becomes unbelief. And we know that unbelief and faith are opposites. You can either have unbelief or you can have faith. Jesus could not work miracles because of people's unbelief. And unbelief, remember we, we said that he rebuked disciples when they had unbelief. We also said, you know, he's, uh, Jesus was so angry about unbelief. He said, perverse generation. He's associating it with immorality. So that is how serious unbelief is. So we cannot give unbelief any place in our lives. Abraham didn't. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He got rid of unbelief. He always tried staying in faith and that's what God expects from us. So we must stay in faith and not give any place for unbelief. He was strengthened in faith in the last class, I think this is where we stopped. We said that he gave glory to God. Um, and there is this element of worshipping God, praising God when nothing has yet happened. Okay, so because we believe that God uh, has done it. Remember, we said faith is the substance. Now faith is. So now we have a framework in our spirit. That gives us the confidence. We used all these words, right? Confidence, assurance, credence. So we have the confidence that God is going to come through. The manifestation will come through. So at this point, we are giving thanks to God. We are giving praise to God. So that is another way of remaining in faith, of strengthening ourselves. This is a very challenging part. Okay, when we uh, learn about I think when we learn about prayer, we learn about thanksgiving prayer. When we learn about believer's authority, we will talk about the power of praise. How praise, thanksgiving, it's actually a weapon against Satan. Where when we are praising God and thanking God, without seeing the manifestation, 
something is happening right in the spiritual realm that's why looks like abraham had a revelation of that and so he was thanking god praising god much ahead of the birth of isaac so the question is can you and i in our faith journey yeah we believed god uh, we we uh, hoped in god against all odds we did not waver in unbelief right we are we've come to this place where our faith is very real in god but can we thank god okay when it looks like nothing is happening so it's very difficult actually to practice this but if we can come to this place of thanking and praising god before seeing the manifestation it's very powerful and abraham had come to that place where he was praising god and later on of course the manifestation came all right so the sixth point which is the last one in the steps of abraham is that he was fully convinced that what god had promised he will perform so finally faith came to a place where it was rock solid now nothing can affect abraham's faith he's already made the journey you know you can take it like uh, we we plot a graph you have x axis y axis right and then you see progress as you know a graph that's going up so the steps of faith are like that faith is increasing faith is stabilizing faith is set okay now it's all upward so abraham has come to a place where at one point it's already settled in his heart so this is how our faith journey must be in the lord we are believing god for whatever he wants to do in our lives right there can be all kinds of promises promises for healing promises for uh, success promises for us to step out you know in ministry maybe god is uh, telling us now that i will give you a lot of opportunities you are going to serve me right these are all the promises promises for personal life where you know god may say okay you know you will thrive with these skills uh with these capabilities or you know relational relational promises where god says okay i'm going to bless you the way he told abraham you will be a father you will you will have a family you will have descendants these are all promises and we journey with god like abraham in the beginning we are bombarded with doubts fears anxieties worry but we have to navigate the graph is slowly going up right we've seen how abraham did it he didn't look at circumstances he focused on god he gave thanks to god he came to a place where he was convinced about the promise the same needs to happen in our lives so we go through everything and then we come to a place in our hearts where we are like this is it god has promised it will happen i already know no is where no in our spirit okay god gives us a knowing in the spirit man deep in our spirit we have an understanding that this is what god is going to do okay and we we are settled we have settled this thoroughly so that is the place that you and i have to come to in our journey with the lord and usually when we talk about faith and you know faith that is established it is associated with rest rest hebrews chapter 4 it talks about a rest in god rest of god what is that rest rest doesn't mean that you know we are sleeping we are not doing anything we may be going about doing our day to day activities but in the spirit we have peace we have you know peace overflowing where we are not disturbed right there's no anxiety there's no worry there's no fear anything can happen around us but we are rock solid peace peace inside is rest okay sometimes physically we can be tired but the more important rest is that spiritual rest where inside us it's like peace like a river we sing about it right we've come to a place where there is peace of mind peace of god shalom wholeness we have the peace of god where the matter is settled we are very sure 
God has promised. God will do it. I'm not going to be disturbed. I'll just do what I need to do. So that is the place where Abraham reached in his journey with the Lord. He, one by one, you know, one by one, the steps that he uh, walked through and came to this place of being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. So this is how we must come to that place. And um, my one question, if we come to this place of rest, does it mean that as soon as we, we are fully assured, fully convinced that the promise will happen immediately? May, may not, may not. So we may have to hang in or stay in that place of faith for a while before we see the manifestation. So Abraham came to that place and he was waiting, waiting, waiting. Not with doubt, anxiety, you know, confusion. No, no, rest, stability. He was waiting, but inside him, there is a groundwork. Faith is the substance. Faith is there. God will do it. It's just a matter of time. And he's going about his daily life. So this is how the steps of Abraham are. And we need to follow the steps. Any uh, thoughts, any questions before we move on to the next section here? Okay, um, Abhidemi, we were just recapping what we had done in the last class. So to answer your question, page 45. We are at the end of page 45 right now. Is any other uh, questions, related questions regarding the steps of faith? All right, so let's move on if there isn't anything. Let's look at some highlights from Abraham's journey of faith. So we will focus uh, on Hebrews chapter 11 and a couple of sections from that passage. We we'll look at verses 8 to 12 and then skip to verses 17 through 19 and we will you know talk about how abraham journeyed in faith so can somebody read out please it's already there in the notes so you just have to read it out by faith abraham moved when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he dwelt in the land of promises as as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promises. Okay. For, for he waited for the city which has foundations, who builder and maker his God. By faith, Sarah herself also re receive, received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who has promised Therefore, from one man and him as good as deep, dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered by Isaac, and he who had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called including that God was able to raise him up even from the de death from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Since. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you, Boaz. We'll just see what are all the details about Abraham that we can observe here. So from verse 8, as we read on, it says, By faith Abraham obeyed. And notice... It continues, by faith he dwelt, and then, you know, it just it's just happening. By faith, again, 
verse 17, Abraham, when he was tested. So he journeyed with God throughout his life. For every assignment, we need faith. Okay, So that is reflected in uh, this passage that Abraham journeyed with God in faith. So there are many instances where faith is required. It's not just like, you know, God says only one thing and we need faith only for that particular thing, but it's a journey. Next, Abraham obeyed. So when God called him, how did obedience come? By faith. He knew that God is good and no harm will happen to him if he obeys God. So remember again, going back to him knowing God. He believed God because he knew God. So he obeyed. He obeyed because he knew God. So that is by faith. Obedience by faith. And then we notice that he went out uh, even though he did not know where God was calling him. So that again is credited to him as an act of belief and an act of faith. He went to the land of promise uh, trusting that you know uh, he would have his children and his offspring inherit that land. In the case of Abraham, during his lifetime, uh, he stayed or he dwelt in the Canaan land, right? So that is the place that God had promised him. However, we know that he never inherited it. But he had faith that the God who led him to that land, out of his land, will one day make his descendants inherit the land so that is the faith of abraham so he was living with you know his his uh, son like you, you had isaac who was born and then later on jacob was there they were all lingering in that space but what is the faith of abraham that one day his descendants will inherit the land so that is uh, something that he believed god for and that's how he lived his life and we can also see a greater Revelation, where he ultimately looked for a land whose uh, whose builder is God. So you know, it's it's beyond just the promised land. He's probably having this understanding of what God is going to do, you know, in the end times and maybe even in the millennial rule, because we know that uh, Jesus is going to rule. There's going to be a, a land of God where God's rule and reign will be established. So. He is putting his faith in all of these things and carrying on in his journey. And then, you know, we see that though he, his body was as good as dead, it says. Many descendants were born out of him. So verse 12, where it says, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude. Okay, so this rem reminds us that there was a certain impossibility in Abraham's life. And yet, what did God do? In that impossibility, right, God proved himself. And what was impossible for Abraham, which is he can't have children at an old age, God changed it into possibility. Now, if you Look at the lives of other men and women of God. Like you look at Gideon. Gideon says, and he was so scared. He was hiding under, was it the terebinth tree? So he was hiding under the tree and the angel comes to him and says, uh, oh mighty man of valor, meaning man of courage. For Gideon, it's impossible. I'm not a person of courage. God is changing it around. Same thing for Abraham. Can't have children. Change it around. As good as dead. But later there is life which is produced. Moses, you know, he says, I stammer, I stutter, I can't. God, I can't. But God says, no, you will be the leader. I'm going to work through you. So the impossibilities and the limitations that we have are not a problem for God. So one man, as good as dead, it says. There is death in the natural, but there is life in the spiritual and that is what God can do when we have faith in God and that's what God did for Abraham and uh, he later on had numerous descendants and in conclusion here you know we see that Abraham it was not uh, just his faith 
you know till isaac was born but there was a point when god told him to sacrifice the son of promise he believed god so much that he was even able to ready to do it everything sounds very tough first of all believing god for the impossible to happen very tough now impossible has happened and god is saying sacrifice how to believe god now but look at the faith of abraham he says okay i'll go i'm ready to sacrifice isaac that's the faith that abraham had why because look at verse 19 what did abraham believe that gave him the courage to take isaac to the mountain very important verse 19 concluding that god was able to raise him up even from the dead amazing so abraham what he knew about god was very deep he knew god can't lie so when god said you will have descendants there's only one way now through isaac now how can isaac die if isaac dies where will the descendants come from so abraham paul says he's writing in romans abraham believe that god will raise up isaac from the dead even if he sacrifice isaac that is the faith of abraham that was the courage with which he went up to the mountain he knew ultimately isaac has to live there's no way isaac can die because isaac is connected to the promise of god and so even if he dies i serve the god of resurrection can you imagine it was later on right when we read like john 11 25 jesus said i am the resurrection and the life jesus proclaimed this truth about himself but abraham way back has a revelation of resurrection through god that means he knows god so well that god cannot lie god is gracious he will not take away what he has given me and even if isaac were to die there is a resurrection life available that can raise up isaac from the dead so he believed god with his whole heart and that's why i i i believe that's why we are talking about abraham as the father of faith okay so we can look at him and we can be inspired to make a journey of faith the way he did it so one last concluding thought here is about faith and works going hand in hand apostle james writes about this uh, in james chapter 2 the passage verses 20 to 26 could somebody uh, read it through please for us but Say. do you want to know o foolish man that faith without works is dead was not Ab- abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled by saying abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only likewise was not rahab the harrat also justified by works when she received the mess- mess- messengers and and sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also all right so here very clearly james talks about faith without works is dead and in the case of abraham because he believed god that he would fulfill that first promise of having descendants uh, that he was ready to take isaac to sacrifice him but that step or that action that uh, abraham did was connected to the faith so what's the point the point is faith will have corresponding actions when we have faith there has got to be actions we can't simply say that you know i have faith can you imagine if all of us say i have faith you know i will pass in the exams i'm not going to study god will bless me right god will do uh 
everything for me i have faith that i'm going to pass and then you don't study does it make does it make any sense yes or no it does not because when we are saying that we believe something there has to be actions connected to that so if, if i am saying that i am going to do well in my studies then i should be studying because as i am studying i am seeing myself you know clear all the assignments excel in whatever has been given uh, you know thrive learn grow there's a picture in my mind there's an image you know for the way for abraham what was that he was seeing the stars he was seeing the the sand maybe he was even imagining himself right with many grandchildren don't know what a, what was his imagination but you remember the point we said he was fully convinced so his imagination by now is transformed he is not looking at himself as a man without any children no in his mind in his imagination he is seeing the good things he is seeing himself in that good future and so he is ready to take any step that god is asking him to take so when god says yeah sacrifice isaac his imagination has not changed his faith in god has not changed yeah i am going to have descendants all that is going to happen i will believe god anyway okay let's go with isaac because surely god has to bring back isaac so in the same way now when we are believing god that you know we are going to do well maybe it's our studies or you know graduation ministry and we have all these pictures if i really believe that those things are ahead of me i will believe that god will bless the work of my hands so which means i'll be doing something if god has to bless the work of my hands there's got to be some work right otherwise what will god bless there has to be some effort there has to be something that is produced out of my ability and so if we can put it this way you give god something to bless because you are believing that these are the things that are going to happen but if we say no i have faith i don't have works james talks like that if somebody says i have faith but no works how can that's that's not right that's not how faith works faith and works go hand in hand in fact verse 20 james 2 20 he says faith without works is dead we need to get up and do something if i say i have faith for a certain matter what are you ready to do what am i ready to do believing god if if i'm believing yes god will heal people right am i ready to pray for them am i ready to proclaim the word to them why why am i doing these things because i am believing god will heal people if i am believing that many will come to know christ and accept christ i'm stepping out you know maybe i'm doing outreach maybe i'm uh, yeah, like pro- proclaiming preaching the gospel on uh, whenever i get an opportunity any platform that i get why because it's associated with my faith when i'm believing that god will bring souls to the kingdom i'm doing something about it so faith along with works is how faith operates no works faith is dead it says i can keep my faith in the cupboard and say yeah i'm believing god for this 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 and corresponding actions zero 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 i'm not displaying faith because i'm not doing anything associated with the promise of god or the instructions of god so faith and works go hand in hand and it's interesting that there is the example of rahab in the same passage she was not even from the genealogy of abraham and yet god chooses to include her why because she believed god and there was a corresponding action she protected the messengers and uh, sent them away and god appreciates her actions so the point is we are saying abraham is our father of faith but he was a man of action 
God said, come out, he came out. Everything God said, he is doing. So when we are saying, he is our father of faith, we are believing, yes. You know, I'm believing, believing, believing. Yeah, but what are we doing? If our father of faith is a man of action, we too should have some action corresponding to our faith. Okay, so that's the point. So today we've, we've uh, touched upon two additional points apart from the steps of Abraham's faith. Um, one is that he made a journey of faith. And so faith is based on relationship with God. It was not limited only um, to receiving a promise. Right? And the second one is that faith and works go together. And that's our observation from Abraham's life. So if you have any questions with regard to this, we could take it up. And I think we will begin with the new chapter in the next class. Because there's a continuation. Uh, I don't want to start it now. And then, you know, there'll be a disconnect. So if there are questions or any points to share, please feel free. All right, so then we'll just leave it at that. And you can go back and meditate on um, the life of Abraham, the journey of faith of Abraham, and uh, see how you could follow after the example of our father of faith, Abraham. Right? So we will... Anything? Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, my question is like, um, even God's know uh, we have faith. Why God test our faith sometimes? Like as Abraham, God's know uh, Abraham can do his son's sacrifice. And why some people can... We can talk about like, uh, God tested Abraham faith like that. Why is that? Uh, see, God tests. Yeah, there are certain tests that he gives his children. So in our lifetime, we go through a period like that. But I think it's to really test the maturity of our character. How much we have grown up in him. See, for Abraham, it was you sacrifice your only son. So it's a test of faith, actually. How much do you believe me? Um, and thank God, you know, Abraham passed the test and he came out stronger. So in the same way, I think to test our character and our maturity, uh, God does it. Why does he do it? I don't know if I can properly answer that. But yeah, I, I, the reason is to test our character and our, how mature we have become in him. And also, uh, I heard somebody say this, uh, that whenever God, uh, there is a test in our lives, right? If we are faithful and uh, we come out strong, tests are before a promotion. Because something within you is, you know, you realize that, oh my goodness, how was I able to do it? You realize that you have actually come up higher when you are able to take that test that has come your way. And then you've proved to yourself and to God that, yeah, there is a level of maturity uh, in me. And so then God says, okay, wonderful. How about we give you bigger assignments? How about we you know, take you into the next step, next stage of your walk and journey? So tests lead us if we do well it leads us into promotion that's how the kingdom of god works okay yes okay shanti says even uh, in what okay she says uh, even adam and eve were tested with the fruit in the middle of the garden all right, so test. See, in this case, there, there are three different things. There is test, which is from God, which is meant with a good intention of bringing us up higher. But there are other things, that is temptation and trials. 
okay so temptations come from satan it's not from god so what you're pointing out there shanti of uh, adam and eve being tempted in the garden temptation was from satan so it was not god tempting them i hope that helps and saubhagya is asking her assignment did not open and got deleted okay so there is a there is an option in google classroom where you can you can directly message the faculty so you can do that if any issue happens like this you can just uh, directly message them and say this has happened please let me know what i can do and uh, you know we will we will respond to you right there so that is that option you don't have to wait to come meet and tell the faculty or write an email even there's a direct messaging system uh, associated with the with the near the document that same page you will see you can message the faculty okay so okay so we look into it uh, i'll have to examine what exactly has happened before i can tell you what to do about it yeah thank you sure so let's pray and close then and uh, i want to request an online student to please lead us in prayer please unmute so we are, so that we can hear you almighty father thank you father god for today's uh, class of master god thank you lord whatever we listening oh god master lord we thank you lord god master lord father thank you for our faith oh master increase our faith oh master like papa ibrahim oh god master yes lord thank you lord god of ibrahim we thank you we worship you thank you lord You, you are talking to us by your word, by your servant, a God, a master. Thank you, Jesus, for our teacher, master God. Yes, Lord, whatever we hear right now, Father God, help us, Holy Spirit, to meditate your word, a master. Thank you, Lord, by this word, master. Bless us, for master. Bless each and every person, Father God. We thank you, our Father. We praise you, master God. Lord, increase our faith more and more in you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, master God. Lord, we. we pray for good health for each and every person we thank you for our teacher thank you lord wonderful teacher you given to us master bless our teacher in jesus name i i pray amen 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 thank you thank you pooja thank you everyone we will continue with faith on friday okay, so pastor we'll go to the next chapter yes thank you